Hey boys and girls, the Angry Crazy Photographer with uh, Volume 2 of Nikon D7100 Tips and Tricks. And as I said before, a lot of these are equally applicable to the Nikon D810. I've had a lot of people ask me, um, uh, what's the difference between, I don't understand about various focus modes, what's the difference between AFS, AFC, and AFA as so far as focus? Or single versus dynamic. I understand. I don't understand how it's splitting up uh, focus. Easy way to put this. Of course, Nikon should put it in their manual. But you know, simple stuff is not how Nikon loves how to write their manuals. But the easiest way to remember, obviously, is when hitting your button right here on the side of your camera and adjusting your rear command dial or your front command dial. Rear command dial lets you dial in AFS, AFC, and AFA, and your front command dial lets you dial in. What you're at right now, I'm on single. And you can see I'm scrolling between, let me put it on bulb so you can see it. I'm scrolling between AFS, AFC, which is continuous, and AFA, which is auto. Single, continuous, continuous focus. Now the easy, simple way to remember this, and this will help you a lot, is that when you press your button over here, and you rotate your rear command dial, or as the assholes at Nikon like to call it, your main command dial versus your sub-command dial. I'm just going to call this the front command dial and this the rear command dial for simplicity. Hitting your button over here, next to your focus, next to your autofocus or manual, the center button right here. Pressing that in and rotating your main command dial between AFS, AFC, and AFA. This is how. Think of the rear dial as button and roll. This is how your camera focuses. And the front command dial, when you press it in, this is what it focuses. Okay, so this is how and this is what. Well, what does that mean? Let's make it really simple so you'll always remember this because the user manual, a lot of people have been confused on this. What is this for simplicity? I just got my Nikon D7100 and I don't understand the difference between talks about AFA and AFS and AFC and then it talks about uh, your front command dial or your sub command dial auto versus uh, your dynamic points like if I stick it in uh, autofocus uh, continuous I can choose these various groups uh, 9 focus points, 21 focus points, or all 51 focus points easy easy way to remember it is when you hit your button over here and you rotate your rear command dial, your front command dial back is how it focuses your camera and front is what it focuses so right now I'm rotating what I'm auto this is what it's focusing It's focusing auto 3d what 51 points what 21 points what 9 points or if I throw it into AFS I either got auto as what or single as what single of course would be your center point here. You can see I'm actually changing it. This is actually a bullshit feature. You can change your focus points or AFA. It's just a bullshit feature. No pro ever uses this. I can't say no, but very few of them. I can't think of a good one that would ever use it. You all have to do is just hold it down halfway, focus and recompose. Okay, whatever it is you plan on focusing for, you just focus in on whatever it is, recompose for compositional value. Okay, so Remember this, this is the easy, stupid way to remember it because a lot of people ask me, well, I don't understand what's the difference between AFS, AFC, AFA, and what the hell the subcommand dial or the front command dial, as I've called it, does. What it does is front is what it focuses on vis a vis. Let me throw it into continuous. What? I've got D9 focus points. That's what. D21, that's what. D51, what. 3D, what. But rolling my rear command dial is how. How, back, front, what. So how, what. How, what. How it focuses, what it focuses on. How it focuses, what it focuses on. Make it simple? Sure is. Pretty simple. Nikon doesn't put that shit in the user man. That's too simple. You know, you can't explain things simple. Especially when it's translated from the Japanese to the English, because we all know how technical the Japanese love to get. You know, God forbid you make something really simple for the people that uh, you know are not photography whores to know what it is you're talking about. But that's all it ultimately means is you hit your button over here, okay? You rotate your rear command dial. Your back is your how, okay? It's autofocusing a single or continuous. 
continuous, you know, for moving subjects. But once you've got your continuous set, then you can tell it what to focus in continuous. 9 focus points, 21 focus points, 51, 3D, or auto. This would be your dinky, stupid uh, point-and-shoot way. This is your point-and-shoot stupid way, continuous auto, but you always can't get the shots in that unless you change your release mode to release instead of uh, focus. Especially if you got low contrast scenery, you got those issues, okay? So, that's the easy way to remember it. If you can't remember that way, you can't remember it at all. I always have mine, since I'm used to older manual cameras, I'm a lot faster, I'm a lot better than anybody else at snapping pictures the way I want them to be by sticking mine always in AFS and S. Obviously when I'm shooting, say moving horses or cars or bicyclists rounding the corner, what I'll do is I'll throw it into autofocus continuous. I've got it set for release, not for focus. Remember AF1 and AF2 settings in video number one of this series. And then I'll have it set for D9 or D21. I do not need D51. There's no way I'm ever using 3D setting, okay? It's a bullshit gear whore feature that nobody really needs auto also don't want it don't need it so if I'm shooting a live moving subject horses race cars bicycles I'll have it in continuous setting for continuous focus but I'll have it set for release instead of for focus on my a1 setting and I will have it set for d9 or, or single depending on what the situation is typically d9 for like a large moving car or a horse or something but so remember Pressing your button over here for focus, you gotta press it in, rotate your rear command dial, talking about how. And this is what. This is how it focuses, and respectively as the secondary or the subset to how it focuses, you've got what it focuses. So first you set your how, and then you set your what. What it's focusing on. 51 focus point groups, 21, 9, or single or auto. I'm going to throw mine back to where I had it. AFS and single mode, which is where I like it 99% of the time. So, how and what? How and what? First, you set your how it focuses, and then you set your what it focuses. Makes it simple, doesn't it? Yeah! That reduces 20 pages of your fucking user manual in your D7100 and D810 to something really simple. Rear command dial is what? I mean, uh, how? Front command dial is what? So I press in my button over here. I got how my camera focuses. And then I set the second subset after. So first it's always how, and then it's always what. Okay? You want to know how your camera focuses. And then you're getting, of course, you can always throw it into manual and manually focus it, obviously, like the older lenses, but we're not talking about that right now. How it focuses, what you said first. Well, I'm going to do single, or no, I'm going to do continuous, because i got a lot of horsey shoots, or cars, or bicyclists, so I need continuous. But what sort of continuous? And I need to choose what sort of continuous. These are my various choices for what. So, and now I'm going to change my what, and then, I'm going to change my, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to change my how, back here, back to a single, and then I'm going to change my what. Your what's your second subcategory to your how? I know I'm repeating myself here, but this is something important you need to learn on your D800 or D810, okay? How. First set your how, then set your what. You got it? Because a lot of people have asked me this, and I've noticed on other YouTube videos people are still confused, and nobody's ever made it simple like I've just done. First set your how, then set your what. Okay, I think I made that abundantly clear, or at least, God, I hope so. At least I hope so. Now I'm going to go into shooting menu to show you something else unrelated to focus. And I'm going to go into shooting menu and all the way down go into movie settings. And what I like to do is choose the destination for my movies. And I like to make my movies on destination card slot 2. Reason for that is typically I have things set in overflow instead of copy. Okay, remember when I was telling you the role played by card number two? If I got it set in overflow, then what I've done is basically I've turned, unless my card number one is already full, what I've done is I've actually uh, set my card, set my card uh, up in the movie settings uh, to have a proprietary movie recordings on card number two. That way I know which card to yank when I want to go and take a movie out. Alright? Pretty simple, right? Okay, mirror up mode over here. Hold down this button. You've uh, 
Gone from single, continuous low, continuous high. Quiet, which is a bullshit feature from hell. It's totally useless. Mirror up. Like if you're taking macro shots, tripod shots, and you don't want uh, shutter slap causing issues, then what you do is when mirror up, what you're going to do is you're actually going to depress your shutter all the way down. And then it meets the uh, shutter has been relay, uh, raised, and your second shot is going to take the actual picture. So you've eliminated shutter slap that could induce vibration and uh, cause some fuzziness in your shot. So that's mirror up. That's what it's good for. It's very good for macro shots, and obviously it's basically a tripod feature, and it's a very important feature for macro photography. Another important thing we need to talk about that's important to doing macro photography, seeing through your viewfinder, since you got a really shallow depth of field, is I'm going to click on my live view button. Okay, and what you do is on macro, of course, most of your stuff's going to be manual. I'm not going to do it right here. But I'm going to focus using live view. It's a lot better than looking through your viewfinder to check what your focus is at. So focus on your on your uh, macro lens in manual mode, and but look, uh, but use it looking at your live view. So your shutter's already up. Then you can take your picture. Okay, so you're focusing using your display. Very handy feature for macro shooting. Right? Right. Okay, talk about flash. Holding in your flash button over here. Remember, you got your bracket button, bracket button over here, and right above that, your flash button. So, what am I doing? I'm going to turn on my bulb here. I'm going to hold in my flash button. Okay, rear command dial shows you what sort of flash you're doing. Red eye, slow, rear, standard flash. Now, rotating my front command dial by holding in my flash button is going to give me my flash exposure. I'm going to either go. I can go down to uh, negative three stops, set it at zero. I'm going to say I want to take my flash exposure, raise it up to uh, one over. So you can adjust your flash value there. Likewise, you use your rear command dial, hold in your exposure compensation. So, exposure compensation, rear dial for changing your exposure compensation right but holding in your flash button and your front command dial you can change your flash compensation use a combination of those two to get your perfect exposure bracketing holding in your bracketing button rotate your rear command dial right now it's showing five pictures five frames but the spread between each frame on either side is going to be dictated by your front command dial okay now i'm going to say say i'm going to bracket a shot and I'm going to pick out later in Photoshop or whatever, whichever one's the best. I'm going to say I'm going to bracket uh, three shots, but I want the exposure value split between those three shots to be. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to have it to be. Uh, let me see. I'm going to use uh, three quarters of a stop either way. Three quarters of a stop on the left side and three quarters of a stop on the right side. I'm going to choose five frames or. Excuse me. Choose five frames. I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to go one stop either way. So one stop over, one stop under, and you're going to bracket all the way. Uh, four shots total on either side of normal exposure. A stop over, a stop under, another stop over, and then another stop under. Okay. Simple enough. Drop it down, back down to zero. Not going to do any. Set it for zero. You don't want to bracket any right now. At least I don't. As I told you, use live view for tripod. Uh, very important for macro photography. Uh, you want to lock out uh, changing your autofocus buttons. Take it out. Bring up. See, so I'm able to change my focus point. It's a total bullshit feature I have absolutely no need for. If you don't want to accidentally change that, you can see it in your viewfinder anyway. Rotate this to lock so you can't actually change that. Alright. This is the close of part two of D3100 and tips and tricks. Remember the most important thing on this that everybody was really kind of confused about is hold in your focus button over here, your main focus command button here and what you're doing is you're rotating your rear to how adjust your how first then adjust your what 
I want to do continuous shooting. Then I want to do what sort of continuous shooting? What? What is your second option, right? And I'm going to choose my how, my AFS, and then I'm going to choose my what underneath my how. So it's first how, and then it's what. Back here's how, out here's what. What and how, what and how. Remember how is up front. Think of a stupid way to remember that as how sits up front. Or just something stupid or simple that until you actually master it, that uh, what is uh, behind you is how, and what's in front of you is what. And you adjust the how first, and the what second. That makes 20 pages of your Nikon D7100 user manual a lot simpler and easier to understand. Oh, that makes simple. You know, this video makes sense. You know, he kind of explained it simply. You know, adjusting my rear command dial by pressing in my autofocus uh, uh, command button over here. You know, by adjusting my rear dial, it tells me I'm going to adjust my how. And then after I'm done adjusting my how, I'm going to choose my what. Ta-da! Very simple. Remember what we already talked about in prior video? Matrix, spot, center. Okay, we talked about that before. This is the uh, end of uh, part two of D7100 Tips and Tricks. And like I said, most of these are also applicable to the D800. Nikon, very mercifully, has laid out its Pro Series cameras all to be very, very close to each other, if not identical in most instances, especially when it comes to your butt set button settings. All right. So if you like this video, you can always make a donation, or you can tell me to go fuck myself, whatever makes you the most happy. Don't have to do anything, obviously. I'm just glad to help, make things simple, because we both know that user manual for someone that's not a shooter and isn't very familiar with your camera can be daunting. It's like, oh shit, this bitch is as big as a phone manual, a phone book. But it's not that bad. I'm going to make things really simple for you, because I love making shit simple, because life's too short for to read a phone book. Okay? like to make things simple. Sample is better. Um, as the old saying goes, you eat with your, your camera, you sleep with your camera. You know, as long as you make love to your camera for a few months and you know all his tips and tricks, you won't be like a, a douchebag like Frono's photo or uh, Jared Pohl or some of these other douchebags. I've actually seen them on a photo shoot and it's not a real photo shoot. They're just out on the streets. There's another guy that looks like he's an anorexic dude with AIDS that has the most funky goatee and this spiky hair that looks like he's got about 100 pounds of moose in his hair. He's the most hideous looking lurch creature I've ever seen. And I'll see them on the streets and they're like, well, you know, I really love this camera. But they're fooling around with that camera hunting and pecking for buttons as if they've only had the camera for two hours. And they think these guys are pros. A pro never hunts and pecks for buttons. He knows where everything is intuitively. He doesn't even have to look nine-tenths of the time. He knows that's there, this there. He has muscle memory and you've got an intuition of where everything is without having to look. It's all about, com it's all about completely forgetting about this fucking camera because you know where everything is and you're that familiar with it and you're solely focused on your shot and once you do that baby your shots will improve drastically when you're sitting your phone ah, where's this feature where's that feature I press this button I press okay that you know that's part of the learning process of your new camera or if you're upgrading if you're just getting into photography whatever the case may be but once you integrate that and this is muscle memory you know kinda like your favorite pair of underwear you've worn a hundred times you just you know, right where it rides, you know, how to, you know, you know everything about it. You know, an inside and out, like your own crotch. Or, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're facing the mirror. Then you can concentrate on what's important, which is the shot. Because this becomes an extension of your body. The only way this camera becomes an extension of your body is because if you become so familiar with it that you're not thinking about what to adjust. You're solely concentrated on composition and light manipulation. And you're letting your camera work as an extension of your body. And that's the only way your photography... It's one of the major ways your photography is going to improve. So... Anyway, that's in part uh, two of D7100 Tips and Tricks. I know I repeated myself a whole lot on that AFS uh, versus, uh, you know, on the how versus the what. But uh, that's extremely important. I've seen a lot of people ask those questions, especially to me. And I've seen a lot of them on the web. And nobody really accurately explained it in a really, really, really simple way. And I think I did. 
Back here is your how, and up here is your what. Oh my god, that's so simple. I wish someone explained it like that before. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's what I'm here for, to make things easier for you. At least that is my goal and intention. All right, another video from the Angry Photographer, D7100 Tips and Tricks. Part number two is ended. Get it, got it, good.